in this lesson um we are going we're going to continue with linear transformations okay so we have a theorem here that i want us to write a proof to that and before that we, we need to understand this well we need to remember these stuff from the lessons that we had on subspaces and vector spaces okay so the theorem reads like if let v and w be vector spaces so here v and w are vector spaces all the conditions for vector spaces are satisfied for v and w and t is such that v maps to w or it takes t takes a value in v and produce another value or result in w that's what this statement here means okay be linear and then the now space of t and then the range of t are subspaces of v and w respectively what we mean is that the now space of t is a subspace of v and then the range of t is a subspace of w and before you prove that something is a subspace we need to show that the zero vector is in that thing so to prove that now space of t is a, a subspace you have to make sure that the zero vector is in the now space and also to prove that the range of t is a subspace the zero vector should be also in the range of t and for two vectors y and x or x and y in the now space when you sum them it should also be in the now like the vector the result you get should also be in the now space when two vectors for two vectors u1 and u2 in the range of t when you sum them the result should also be in the range of t for um, a scalar c in the field and the vector x in the now space and also a vector u in the range of t when you multiply x by the scalar it should give you another vector this result that you get should be in the now space when you multiply the vector in the range of t by some c you should get another vector in the range of t so let's write the proof right so first we want to show the first the now space of t is a subspace of v remember this is how the transformation looks like v size um, t size that v maps to w so it takes an element in v and maps it to w now um we want to show that zero is actually part of the now space of t now um what are we going to say here for a linear transformation that, that's something i don't i don't think i've mentioned this before but for t to be linear all right for t to be linear um we know know that so if something is a linear transformation then the transformation of the zero vector in v the zero vector you pick in v should be equal to the zero vector whatever transformation you do you perform the transformation of the zero vector in v should give you the zero vector in w right so that is for t to be linear this should be satisfied so and then what is the now space? the now space of t is defined to be all the vectors x in v such that the t of that x will give you the zero vector in w right we need to specify that okay so here since we know that and we know that the t of zero v or zero in the vector space v gives you the zero in w it means that the zero vector v is is the zero vector in v is actually in the now space why because the transformation we want to find the now space it's all the vectors in v such that their transformation will give you zero and we know automatically that for t to be linear the transformation of zero should give you zero so it means automatically zero belongs to the now space so the first point is checked that is showing that zero is in now space of t and that is for the first part saying that the now space of t is a subspace of v now the second part so let me say this is i the second part is to show that so suppose you have two vectors x1 or maybe x and y in the now space of t what do you want to show we want to show that the transformation of x plus y will give you zero right so we want to show that what we want to show is to show that x plus y also belong to the now space of t that is what we want to show okay let me erase it and that's the goal here now let's look at this what is the transformation of x plus y 
then so i'm writing a formal proof then t of x plus y since t is linear we can split this into t of x plus t of y that is the properties of the um linear transformation and what would this give you remember we are saying x and y are in the now space when something is in the now space what is the transformation is going to give you the transformation will give you zero because x is in the now space it means the transformation of x will give you zero in the w and then um y is also in the now space because we are saying x and y are both in the now spaces like now space okay so the transformation of y is also going to give you zero and when you sum these two vectors you're going to have zero plus zero the vector zero will give you zero so indeed when x and y are both in the now space it means x plus y when you sum them, their transformation also gives you zero. So it means that it's also in the now space of T. Right? So that second part is checked. Um, the last part that we are supposed to show is that the any scalar multiple of a vector in the now space should also be in the now space. So now suppose X belongs to the now space of T, right? And then C belongs to the field that we are interested in. And what is the t of so then what is t of um t of c times x is what this is a linear transformation and if you, re you remember one of the properties of linear transformation the transformation of c or scalar multiple of a vector is the same as the scalar out times the transformation of the vector now since x belongs to the now loss now space what is the transformation of x it's going to give us zero so we're going to have c into zero w when you multiply c to zero you're going to have the zero vector in w as well so then this means that if x belongs to that and c is a scalar this thing then it means c x belongs to the now space and these are the conditions for you to to be able to satisfy so that we can say you are a subspace so indeed so that is a proof so for for um the case that the now space is a subspace of v and there's a subspace of v because the zero vector in v belongs to the now space that is the first point we proved any two vectors that you picked in the now space the assign also belong to the now space and then a scalar multiple of any vector in the now space will give you another vector in the now space right now second thing is to prove show that r of t is a subspace of w right so the first thing we want to prove is that the zero vector in w also belongs to the range of t now what is the the definition of the range of t before i i start the range of t is defined as the transformation of all the x's such that s belong to v right and if you remember i said that this is a subspace a subset of w right it be, because all that when you transform x in v you get a vector in w that is the definition of the linear transformation you take a vector in v and you get another thing in w right so when you when you transform something in v what it gives you is another thing in w so it means all the t of x that you get will be in w now um let's let's look at this we know that since t is linear we know that t of x i'm sorry um zero vector in v is equal to zero vector in w right so this is a vector that's why I have the arrows in there. So it means this zero. So whatever results you get, these are the, the elements of the range of range of t. These values you get. So the trans when you transform zero, you get this, and that is what we are interested in. The output is the range. So this is a member. It belongs to the range of t. So it means that the zero vector in W is actually in the range of t. Right, so you have that now the second part is that suppose i have two vectors 
suppose um u1 and u2 these are all vectors are in the range of t what does it mean it means that then there exists some x and y in v right because if these are u1 and u2 are in the range of t it means they are the output of some transformation some transform vectors i don't know if what i'm saying makes sense to you but if u1 and u2 are in the range of t then it means we took some vectors in v and transformed them to get these u1 and u2 right so then there is this x y x and y in v such that what such that the t of x gives us u1 and then the t of y gives us u2 that's what we mean all the elements in the range of t are the output of transform vectors in v okay so then what can we say again we can go ahead and say that um let's sum these um how do i call it u1 and u2 and see what happens what is u1 plus u2 u1 plus u2 is going to be equal to um t of what um let's see let's let's go ahead and start from somewhere what is t of x plus y right what is this remember x plus y is a vector in v because v is a vector space right x x plus y is a vector in v because v is a vector one, one v is a vector space as when you sum any two vectors it belongs to v and this should give you some value in the range of t because this is a vector in v and when we pick something in v the transformation will give you another thing in w so this is equal to the transformation of x plus the transformation of y and what is the transformation of x is u1 plus u2 and then what we are trying to say is when you, the moment you pick something in v capital v the transformation should give you another thing in w so here the transformation gave us t of x which we know it belongs to w t of y also belongs to w and then so when you sum them that this is given this, the transformation of x plus y is equal to u1 plus u2 and we know the transformation of this vector should give you something in w right so it means um sorry this should be give you something in or should be belong to the range of t because that is the idea the range of t is all the transformation of the values or the vectors in v right so when we picked a vector x plus y in v when you transform it you should get something in the range of t that is the definition of the range of t so it means t of x plus y is equal to u1 plus u2 that belongs to the range of t right so it means that when we pick two vectors u1 and u2 when you sum them this vector also belongs to the range of t and the last part is to show that when for c in the field and u in the range of t what happens we know that there is some x in v in v such that t of x will give you u now let me multiply both sides by c and see and see what happens i'm going to have c t of x is equal to cu now on the left side it means on the left side what you get is since t is a linear transformation i can pull the c inside and have c t um t c x okay and this is equal to cu right where u is a vector sorry now the question is is cx in v yes yeah, cx is in v because v is a vector space so any scalar multiple of a vector in in um v since x is in v right it means cx is also in v and 
what is the definition of the range of t? The range of t is defined to be the transformation of all the vectors in v. And since this is also in v, it means the t of c here, cx, belong to the range of t. In other words, the t of cx is what? cu, which belongs to the range of t. And that ends up proof to why the range of t is also a, vector, a subspace of w, right? Here, the reason we are focusing more on w is that the zero vector in the range of t is in w. Um, all these outputs, cu and u1 plus u2, they are all in w as well. So that is the proof to why this theorem is true, that if you have a, sub, um, a linear transformation, then the null space of t and then the range of t are both subspaces of v, sorry, they are subspaces of v and then w respectively, okay? See you in our next lesson.